G'day YouTube, it's Turbo Tristan here, and in today's video, I'm gonna give you a quick rundown on how to fit a blow off valve to a Toyota Caldina GT4 with a 3S GTE and all wheel drive turbo. Really, really exciting car. I had a look on YouTube. There's no information that's any good or useful at all about how to fit a blow off valve onto one of these cars. And there's a little bit of a trick to them. Uh, Toyota fit the blow off valve, what I like to call backwards. Uh, so I'll show you how to get around that so that you don't make the same mistake as my friend made and fit an aftermarket blower valve around the wrong way because the aftermarket ones are designed to go one way, the Toyota factory one goes backwards. So check this out. <laughs> uh, this is the factory one. So Trung's already taken that off. Now it does live just here, bolted to the airbox in what I would call sort of a backwards fashion. Uh, normally you get your pressure from underneath the blow off valve and then it vents out back into the airbox out of the hole like a normal one, which you'd see on most Nissans, Mazdas, Subarus. But Toyota have decided to do it a little bit differently and I'll explain that in just a moment. But I thought I'd give you a close up tour of the engine bay. So, just down here is a turbo, right there. You can see the top of it there. It feeds directly straight into a top mounted intercooler, which is fed by the bonnet scoop right here. And then it goes straight into the air intake back over there, or the throttle body. Uh, and the blow off valve, just like a Subaru, is mounted straight off the intercooler and then plums back into the air intake. But for some reason or other, Toyota have done it a little bit backwards. So I'm gonna explain that real quick now. So this is the factory Toyota blow off valve. It's the Denso made in Japan factory plastic blow off valve. And you'll see just in here, that's the piston there that pushes up and down. It's actually so light with little to no force you can move that piston, uh, which is one reason why you need to replace a factory blow off valve. Yes, they work, yes, they do their job, and essentially changing a blow off valve isn't actually going to give you an increase in actual power but it does change the power delivery and how the power feels and how it comes on uh, so it's a really really worthwhile mod to get back some free power that you'll be losing and i'll explain why right now so on a normal car you'll have your blow off valve somewhere on an intercooler pipe where there's pressure pressure pushes on the underside of that and opens up to let out uh, the boosted air so it doesn't go back into your air intake and damage the front of your turbo uh, or upset your airflow meter or airflow sensor, whatever you're running on your car. The vacuum line here on the top goes to the intake side. So on the intake manifold or the plenum, whatever you want to call it. So under vacuum, it actually sucks air out of here and that actually will open up that diaphragm there so when that's under vacuum that's actually sucking the air from the top the slight bit of pressure boost from the turbo just blowing it like not even one psi pushes that open and lets the air creep out so it's essentially not building any boost at all so it actually puts a little bit of lag in the system when the car does finally start to spool up and make some boost uh, instead of vacuum sucking on this port, it actually pushes air in here and pushes that pin down firm and seals here. So it, it's going to take uh, vacuum again to release the pressure from the other side of this. Now, for whatever reason, Toyota put it in the engine bay, uh, what I call backwards. Now, it's not backwards because you're still having pressure on both sides and the valve still works exactly the same. Under vacuum, it's opening the valve under boost it's closing the valve and holding everything shut so it still works normally um, I just call it backwards because I'm used to seeing them the other way around so we'll sit this one aside for now the best way to combat that is with an aftermarket blow off valve now this is a turbo smart compact blow off valve uh, spelt with a K these are really good I've used these in the past on my Nissan Pulsar triple S and I have a turbo smart ultra gate in my car now i use their products I always have now same pinky finger pushing on that it does move but i've got to actually push force on it whereas the other one was just like a little poke and it opens up so this one's much harder piston 
and you can see in there it's it's all metal it's all steel and it's very uh, difficult to push some blow off valves have an adjustment on the top which will then increase the spring pressure to stop it opening under vacuum uh, and light boost so what we're going to do today is put this blow off valve on now trung's already had a crack at it and he followed the exact same directions as the factory blow off valve and put it in what i call again backwards so if you put it in backwards on this one it's going to hit this piston it's not going to do anything which is fine and then when it does give vacuum it has to open up quite a long way to let that air out whereas if it's the other way around just a slight crack and all the air is going to pass straight through in a nice even flow so we'll put it the way it's supposed to go and it's even got plumb back uh, written here as well so that's the way turbo smart intended it so we're going to stick that on here so what i've done is i've used a piece of silicon radiator hose that i had lying around a couple of hose clamps top quality worth ones and all i'm going to do is slide that on i've clamped it down this size isn't quite the right size for a caldina the inlet and outlet are actually 29 millimeter uh, which is this size here and that size there on the turbo smart blow off valve that trung's got is actually 25 mil i believe you can get bigger ones so just make sure you get the right size it's just a matter of sliding this on under here for the plumb back situation which is what trung wants we just need to get another piece of hose which i'm going to put on after the video because i want to hear the nice blow off valve sounds and join from here to here really quite simple on the top of the blow off valve you'll see this vacuum line nipple you just need to remember to connect that up and then everything will work perfectly uh, don't forget to tighten up your hose clamps because you don't want your blow off valve popping off while you're driving which has happened to me before give myself some breathing room it's got the little spring clamps so make sure you do that up tight Don't forget to slide the hose clamp over the other side of the hose, tighten everything down. That ain't going nowhere. Now we can test out how it sounds. So that brings us to the end of this video. I hope you liked it and I hope that you really enjoyed the content. Uh, I thought I would share something with everyone and help people uh, in the car community figure things out because it's not always straight up and down. It's not always super crystal clear. So I decided to make this video for everyone in the whole entire world that ever has to do a blow off valve on a Toyota Caldina. Uh, it's a really, really good mod, gives you back free power that you were losing or weeping away through the factory plastic leaking blow off valve. That goes the same for any other car with a factory blow off valve. It's a good idea if, if you are vlogging the car or you do want some extra performance, change that out first. It won't increase your peak power, but it'll help bring in all of your boost sooner and help uh, a more linear, more responsive, powerful car. Thanks for watching. Make sure you like, share and subscribe and we'll see you in the next video.